Hi, this is Josh Kolb for Daf Shui. We are learning Masechet Kiddushin, Daf Tet Vav. Uh, last week's video, I went all over the I went over all of the rules of slavery that appear in the Torah in the three parshiot in the Torah in Shmot Vaikra and Devarim that talk about the institution of slavery. Um, and today, I wanted to talk a little bit about the nature of midrash. Uh, the Daf is really full of a bunch of midrashim that try to uh, figure out exactly the particulars. How does uh, the slavery How does slavery work? Particularly, Eved Ivri, a Jewish slave. Um, but I wanted to just take a step back and talk about um, Midrash in general. What are the Midrashic techniques that you're going to encounter in this daf and in many other dapim? Um, so the first most important notion, I would say, um, technique, uh, way of reading the Bible is that verses, words, shouldn't be superfluous. If they seem to be superfluous, they must be teaching something that we don't already know. In other words, there's a layer of hidden meaning in the Torah, and to tease out that hidden meaning, we look for superfluous words, phrases, etc., and insert that meaning into those places, and you'll see that a lot in these pages. Uh, the second uh, 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 notion is that a phrase or a word should not have more than one meaning, more than one midrash, unless there's some kind of special feature with that word that allows us to darshan it, to explain it twice. Um, you'll see this very prominently throughout the Bavli. If a Tana uses a phrase to uh, learn one thing and he wants to learn something else, he has to find a new technique, a new midrash, a new hook, if you will, to hang it on to learn the other thing as well. Uh, so that's the, um, the notion that each word ha or each phrase has one and only one independent meaning. Uh, the third technique that you're going to see a lot over here is very prominently featured is what I would call transference. The notion that you can transfer halachot that appear in one context into another context. And to do that, you need a word hook. Uh, here, we see this a lot with sachir. The word sachir appears in all three passages. So it allows us to transfer um, laws in one passage to another passage. Um, and that's sometimes called a technique of a gezeira shava, a, a close comparison of the same word that appears in two different contexts. Sometimes it's called a hekesh, um, another word for a comparison. But it is also a very prominent feature of midrash. Um, midrash is not always intuitive. In other words, Midrash is not trying to get at the pshat. What Midrash is trying to do is to find the hidden layer of meaning in a verse, uh, and in Halachic Midrash to try to tease out more um, meaning from it. It is not really interpretation um, as, so, or, uh, as so much as something like, uh, you might call it exegesis, but really some might call it isogesis, the insertion of meaning externally into a verse. It has a little bit of elements of both. Neither of them are perfect uh, translations of Midrash. So um, again, I would invite you to join our Facebook discussion. If you have some questions about the techniques of Midrash, uh, that's a great place to ask. If you have questions about the halachot here in general, um, we're happy to talk about them there as well.